Welcome to the Faith Lift Radio Podcast, where doubt is destroyed and your faith is lifted. Here's today's message from Dr. Glenn. Glory to God. All right, today I want to talk to you about, amen, faith for our God-given destiny. In order for you to possess your destiny, you're going to have to develop faith, amen. Faith is not just about acquiring a car, acquiring a house. <clears throat> Thank God for that. But faith, the whole purpose of faith is to move into your God-given destiny. So let's bow our head and let's pray. Father, we want to thank you today for the word of the living God. Spirit of God, I'm asking you today that you will think through my mind and that you will speak through my lips. Thank you for these, your wonderful people that got ears to hear, mind to understand, and heart to receive the word of the living God. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody say amen. I certainly hope that you're still on your time of fasting. Amen. And remember that fasting, amen, is shutting down the flesh to hear from the Spirit. Praise God. So, Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 9. 1 Samuel chapter 9. Glory to God. So just follow along with me. 1 Samuel chapter 9, please. Glory to God. <clears throat> and I'm going to read from verse... Um, I'm going to read from verse 1. Now, there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bekoroth, the son of uh, Aphia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of, men of Israel goodly a person than he. For his shoulders and upwards he was higher than any of the people. <clears throat> now look at verse 3. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. I want you please to underline that in your Bible. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, <coughs> and arise and go seek the asses. I need you to underline that. So two things I want you please to underline. In verse 3, and the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. Underline that. And Kish said to Saul, his son, take now one of the servants with you. Arise and go seek the asses. I need you to underline that. And he passed through Mount Ephraim and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalim, and there they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come, and let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us. <clears throat> and he said to him, verse 6, Behold now, there is in this City, a man of God. I want you please to underline in your Bible. Behold, now there is in this city a man of God, <clears throat> and he is an honorable man. Please underline in your Bible, a man of God who is an honorable man. All that he saith comes surely to pass. Now let us go thither, peradventure he can show us our way that we should go. Please underline in your Bible. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring to the men of God. What have we? And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver, and that will I give to the men of God to tell us our way. <clears throat> Verse 9, before, before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come, and let us go to the seer, for that for he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. A seer is somebody who can see in the, into the spirit and see into the future. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 1 and verse 2. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance? Verse 2, when thou art departed from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre 
in the border of Benjamin at Zelzah, and they will say unto thee, The asses which you went to seek are found, and lo, thy father has left the care of the asses, and sorrowed for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> many believers live their lives so randomly, and they never actually possess their destiny. <coughs> Many do not even discover their destiny, and many are deluded to think that they are on track when clearly we see no evidence in their lives that they are on track. And so many treat their lives uh, <clears throat> uh, with a series of experiments without ever being destiny-driven. And so they use their life like a guinea pig to do experiments on when they should be destiny driven. All right. Now, we know that Jesus said in John chapter 15 and verse 8, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. So it is God's will for you to bring forth much fruit in your life. Now we see here that Saul's journey ended up with him becoming king of Israel. So he discovered his destiny and there were some forces at work for him to <clears throat> discover and possess his destiny. And so over the course of this series, we're going to look at the forces that we must engage in order for us to possess our destiny. Now, before I go any further, what is destiny? We must, first of all, define what destiny is. Remember, there are forces to be engaged in order for destiny to be unfolded. And so if you want your destiny to be unfolded this year, there are some forces that you need to engage. But let's define what destiny is. Now, what is destiny according to the secular? What is destiny according to the secular? Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> destiny according to the secular, this is how the secular def define destiny. Destiny is what the hand of fate has handed you and there's nothing you can do to change it. That is how the world and the secular define destiny. Let me say it again. And it is completely, uh, obviously, goes against everything that the Word of God says. So the secular system defines destiny as what the hand of fate, F-A-T-E, has handed you. And because the hand of fate F-A-T-E, has handed you that. There's nothing you can do to change it. <clears throat> Obviously, that is wrong. Why? Because scripturally, destiny is what the hand of faith, F-A-I-T-H. It is what the hand of faith hands you from God's established will to change your circumstances, your present and your future. Let me say it again. There's a clear distinction between how the secular define destiny and how the Word of God defines destiny. The Word of God, well, let's, let's go back to the secular and uh, definition of what destiny is. Des, the, according to the secular, destiny is what the hand of fate, F-A-T-E, has handed you and there is nothing you can do to change it. That is not true. Scripturally speaking, destiny is what the hand of faith, F-A-I-T-H, hands you from God's established will to change your circumstances, to change your present, and to change your future. But it is done by the hand of faith, F-A-I-T-H. Can you say amen? So your destiny is what God has already prescribed in the Word of God. That is the generic destiny, which is uh, equal for every believer. What do I mean by that? God wants you to be well, to be healthy, to be whole, to be strong. God wants you to prosper, Third John verse 2. 
Beloved, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health. All right? That we know that God wants you to have peace of mind. Glory to God. Not to be worrisome. Not to be a worry ward. Glory to God. Amen. God wants you to be at peace. Can you say amen? But <clears throat> then that's what the word reveals to you. But then the Holy Ghost will reveal to you this, the specifics of God's will for your life. That is when you have to spend time before God and <clears throat> and see what God has deposited into your life. Now, so how do we discover and what must we do to um, discover our destiny in order for us to possess our destiny? What are the things that we must know first? Well, I want you to write a few things down. Praise God. Going back to Saul, remember? Saul was looking for his father's donkeys, and he ended up having an encounter with the man of God. And with that, he entered into his destiny. All right? So he ended up becoming the king of Israel. Now, so number one, I want you to write a few things down today. Glory to God. Write a few things down today. Let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 3. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee and arise and go seek the asses. Number one, if you're going to possess your destiny, all right, what must you do? Saul, who ended up on his, he went out, who went on his father's mission, entered into the fullness of his destiny. Number one, you must be about your father's business. You must be about your father's assignment. You must be about your father's mission. Can you say amen? So we see that Saul was on his father's business, on his father's assignment, on his father's mission, all right, before he entered into the fullness of his destiny. Now, <clears throat> Saul was about his father's business. Those who possess their destiny are about their father's business. Can you say amen? We must be about our father's business in order for us to enter into the fullness of our destiny. The father's business is to be our business. Our business is to be about the Father's business. Notice the Bible says, Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And the asses, verse chapter, chapter 9 and verse 3, And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise, and go seek the asses. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see that also mentioned in the book of Genesis chapter 36 and verse 24. Genesis chapter 36 and verse 24. And these are the children of Zibion, both Aja and Ana. This was that Ana that found the mules in the wilderness as he fed the asses of Zibion, his father. Notice that Ana, glory be to God, was about his father's business, just like Saul was about his father's business. Now, let's go, please, ladies and gentlemen, glory to God, <clears throat> to Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2 and verse 49. This is about our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wish you not that I must be about my father's business? Saul was about his father's business, Amen. Ana was about his father's business. Jesus was about his father's business. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, let's come down to 1 Samuel chapter 16. <coughs> Glory to God. <coughs> We're going to read verse 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes hither. All right, notice that 
David was also about his father's business keeping of the sheep. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 15 till verse 18. Glory to God. And David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep. David was about his father's business at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. First Samuel 17, verse 28, <clears throat> And Eliab his elder's brother heard when he spake unto the man, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and said, Why camest thou uh, hither? And with whom hast thou left this this few sheep in the wilderness? Notice, it was a few sheep, but David was looking after them. I know your pride and the naughtiness of your heart, for thou art come that you might see the battle. Now, <clears throat> so you can see that both uh, all David, Jesus, Anna, and Saul were about the father's business. Hence, that's why they entered into the fullness of their destiny. So you need to be about your father's business. You need to understand, I want you to write this down, please. You need to be about the service of God. Service is success. Say that with me, please. Service is success. Divine service will secure divine success. Divine service will secure divine success. Can you say amen? So taking the father's assignment seriously will secure your consignment. Now, what is a consignment? It is a batch of goods destined for or to be delivered to someone or for someone. So when you are serious about your father's assignment, then you will secure the consignment that God has for you. You must be about the father's business. You must be about kingdom business. Amen. <clears throat> Glory be to God, inward and outward. So, number one, you must be, ladies and gentlemen, about uh, <clears throat> the Father's business. Now, let's look at um, Nehemiah chapter 11 and verse 16. So, remember now, <clears throat> you must be about the kingdom business, inward and outward. Amen. In other words, in-house and out-house business. Look at this now, Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 16. And Shabbatai and Josabad of the chief of the Levites had the oversight of the outward business of the house of God. Of the, outwards, of the outward business of the house of God. Are you listening? Notice that? Shab Shabbatai and Josabad. Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 22. The overseer also of the Levites at Jerusalem were Uzi, the son of Bani, the son of Hashabiah, all right, the son of Mataniah, the son of Misha, of the sons of Asaph. The singers were over the business of the house of God. So you've got in-house business and out-house business. Are you listening? You've got what? In-house business and out-house business. Uh, ministry, church, we got in-house business and out-house business. Somebody has to take care of the building. Somebody has to take care of cleaning the building. Are you listening? Somebody has to take care of the maintenance. It is just as important of, uh, uh, at being uh, behind the pulpit. Service is important. Now, there are many people today that don't want to be uh, in church. And I'm telling you, I'm sorry. Don't think that you can find the fullness of your destiny by being outside of church. Are you listening? All right. You got to be in a church, plugged in into a church. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So you got the outhouse business and the in house business. All right. <clears throat> now, unless you're sick or unless there's no church in your uh, vicinity, we understand that. Okay. There are people that live in areas that they have no churches within the vicinity. But most of us don't have that excuse. A lot of people don't have that excuse. A lot of people are just offended and hurt and they are uh, independent in the spirit and they don't want to be under authority. Okay, 
Acts chapter 6 and verse 3, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. All right, Romans 12 and verse 11, Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Can you say amen? So we must be about our Father's business. And what is our Father's business? S saving that which is lost. Saul went to look and to seek for that which was lost. Are you listening? I said, <clears throat> Saul went to seek for that which was lost. We, our father's business is still the same. We must seek for those who are lost. David was looking after a few sheep. <clears throat> we must also look after the few sheep that we have. In-house and out-house business. Can you say amen? So number one, if we want to possess our destiny, we must be about our father's business. Number two, Saul, glory to God, was willing to leave the status quo. He was willing to leave the comfort zone. All right? He was willing to put himself out for the right cause. He did not take the easy ride. All right? David also left the status quo. Saul also left the status quo. Psalms 42 and verse 7. Psalms 42 and verse 7 says, Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of the water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Psalms 107, verse 23 and verse 24, They that go down to the, ship, to the, to the sea in ships uh, that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. See, many want to tap greatness without ever getting out of their comfort zone. You cannot catch a whale in shallow waters. Are you willing to go the distance? Are you willing to step into the deep? Are you willing to put your hands to the plow? Are you willing to do the work? Many want the wonders but they don't want to do the work. They don't want to get their hands dirty. So they were willing to step out of their comfort zone. And I told you enough times and many times, and I will reiterate it today, that nothing grows in the comfort zone. Nothing of worth will grow in the comfort zone. Can you say amen? There's only death and mediocrity in the comfort zone. So, he left the status quo. He was willing to leave the comfort zone. Are you willing to live the status quo? Are you willing to leave the comfort zone of where you are right now to enter into the fullness of your destiny? Number three, the third thing, that we see that uh, <clears throat> help Saul to enter into the fullness of his destiny. Look in your Bible, please. Thank you, Lord. We're going to read that. Chapter 9 and verse 3 again. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with you, Arise and go seek the asses. Number three, who is with you on your journey? Who is with you on your journey? In other words, your company will determine your destiny. Your company will determine your destiny. The company that you keep, will determine what will accompany you in life. The company that you keep will determine what will accompany you in life. Now, let's come down to verse 4 to verse 9. And he passed through Mount Ephraim and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. Notice that he passed through along with this servant. Then they passed through the land of Shalim, 
and there they were not. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. Notice that uh, this man stuck with Saul through thick and thin, through no finding anything. And when they come, when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come, let us return, lest my father leave caring for the asses, and take thought for us. And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man, and all that he says comes surely to pass. Now let us go there, peradventure he can show us our way that we should go. All right, now, <clears throat> then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring to the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? And the servant answered and said to Saul again, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver. That will I give to the men of God to tell us our way. Notice, point number three, who is with you on your journey? Your company will determine your destiny. Now, what do I mean, <clears throat> hallelujah, by good company? Notice that this man, this servant, was willing to invest into the life of Saul. So what is good company? Those who are willing to invest into your future. Those <clears throat> who will stick with you through thick and through thin. Are you listening? Those who what now? Those who will stick with you through thick and through thin. Those who, amen, will invest into your future, invest into your destiny. That man, that servant, went with Saul everywhere. He did not abandon Saul. Are you listening? You need people in your life that will not <clears throat> just be with you when times are good. You don't need no good time, Charlie. Are you listening? You need people that's going to be with you all the way through. All the way through. All right? <clears throat> through thick and through thin. Some people, they will only show up when times are good. And then when times are bad, they'll walk away from you. Are you listening? When you're going through a crisis, they'll walk away from you. But you need people who's going to be with you on that journey. Can you say amen? They'll be with you on that journey. <clears throat> Number two, they're willing to invest into your future. <clears throat> Number three, they will take you into your prophetic destiny. Number four, they will take you to a divine encounter. They will take you into a divine encounter. So what do I mean by good company? I'm talking about those who will stay with you on a journey and will not give up. Amen. They're not fair-weather friends. Are you listening? But they stick with you on your journey, number one. Number two, they are willing to invest in your future. Number three, they take you to your prophetic destiny. Number four, they take you into a divine encounter. That servant took him to meet Samuel, and they had an encounter. Are you listening? So number three, ladies and gentlemen, praise God. Who is with you on your journey? See, some of you, you want to be loners. And you know what? Do you know what's going to happen to you when you're a loner? You're going to be all alone. And you can't blame nobody but yourself. All right? We were created for relationship. We were created for connection. And I'm sure you've watched the Discovery Channel that whenever a lion wants to attack, he has to wait for one of the buffalo or one of the uh, whatever animals or deer to break away from the pack. Then he will devour it. And so isolation brings desolation and destruction. 
Isolation will bring desolation and destruction. You need people around you. You need good company. Now, what are good company? Those who will stick with you through the distance all the way through. Those who will invest in your future. Those who will take you to, pro to your prophetic destiny. And those who will take you to have a divine encounter. Can you say amen? Praise God. So that's number three. Number four, ladies and gentlemen. Number four, praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Saul honored spiritual authority. Saul honored spiritual authority. Now, so he went to have an encounter with Samuel and his life changed. His life changed. Someone said many years ago, when Satan wants to destroy you, he will bring somebody in your life. And when God wants to bless you, he will bring somebody into your life. Are you listening? I'm not sent to everybody, but I'm sent to somebody. All right? Now, they honored spiritual authority. You need to learn to honor spiritual authority. The Bible tells us in the book of Hosea chapter 12, and verse 13, Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved. God used Moses to deliver Israel. God used Joshua to bring the Hebrews into the promised land. God used Nehemiah to rebuild the wall. God used Ezra to rebuild the temple. God used Paul <coughs> to touch the Gentiles. God used Paul, amen, to bring about the effectiveness in the life of Timothy and Titus and so forth and so on. All right? So, ladies and gentlemen, who you respect determines what you receive from them who you respect do, will determine what you receive from them. Whoever you don't res respect, you will not receive anything from them. And the problem is not them. The problem is you. Because you have no respect. Are you listening? So you've got to learn to respect and honor spiritual authority. And we've got a case today in modern society where there is no respect for those who are in authority. Now, so remember this now, who you respect determines what you receive from them. The purpose of spiritual authority is to deploy your destiny. Moses laid hands on Joshua and deployed Joshua into his destiny. Elisha, who followed Elijah, had his ministry and destiny unlocked. Ruth's destiny was unlocked when she chose to follow Naomi. Who are you following today? Well, I follow God. Yes, we all follow God. But God is the one who set into the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Are you listening? So, when you refuse to be under authority, you will never have authority. All right? <clears throat> you see, familiarity, write this down, please. Familiarity destroys receptibility. Familiarity will destroy or destroys receptibility. Now, Saul went to inquire about donkeys but was handed the kingdom. Right? <clears throat> Peter was after a draught of fish, but he became a fisher of men. <clears throat> Notice that Saul got much more than what he went for. Right? <clears throat> and notice that Saul went to the men of God, not the other way around. Elisha went after Elijah, Peter followed after Jesus. Your destiny is connected with someone. Let me say it again. Your destiny 
is connected with someone. <clears throat> you do not go to a church because of a suitable building or the proximity of the building to the house, but you go to a church for what impartation that you will receive from that man or woman of God. So you've got to honor spiritual authority. Can you say amen? Say that with me, please. I've got to honor what? Spiritual authority. And so your destiny is connected with someone. Like I said to you, if you are a loner, I'm sorry. Okay? You're going to be all by yourself. And life is going to be a whole lot harder by yourself. Who are you sharing life with? Okay. Number five for today. Number five, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 11 to verse 14, And as they went up to the hill, <clears throat> to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water, and said to them, Is the seer here? On the line of your Bible. Is the seer here? And they answered them and said, He is. Behold, he is before you. Make haste now for he came today to the city, for there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place. And as soon as you become into the city, you shall straightway find him before he go up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat until he come, because it does bless the sacrifice. And afterwards they eat that be bidden. Now therefore get you up, for about this time you shall find him. <clears throat> and they went up into the city, and when they were come in the city, behold, Samuel came out against them for to go up to the high place. Number five, if you want to go into your destiny and possess your destiny, you've got to be willing to ask the right questions to the right people. You've got to be willing to ask questions, the right questions, to the right people. Ladies and gentlemen, your answers are hidden in some people. Your answers are hidden in some people. Are you listening? And they have an answer for you. But if you're not willing to ask the right questions, you're not going to get the answers. And you've got to ask the right people the right questions. You only qualify for answers if you ask questions. But again, if you are a loner, all right, and you think you're going to make it all by yourself, then you, the, you cannot ask the right question to the right people because you're all by yourself. Are you listening? Are you listening? The Bible tells you there is safety in the multitude of counselors. There's safety in the multitude of counsel. Are you listening? So, let me go back again, and let me give you these five things for today that I gave you, that I want you to write it down. Number one, if you're going to possess, you have faith for your God-given destiny, you must be about your father's business. All right, number two, amen. Number two, write this down, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You've got to be willing to leave the status quo, be willing to leave the comfort zone, Number three, who's with you on your journey? Your company determines your destiny. Number four, you've got to honor spiritual authority. Amen. And number five, you've got to be willing to ask the right questions. They said, is the seer here? Where is the seer? Where is the prophet of God? Where is the man of God? They were willing to ask the right questions to the right people. God has people right now that will point you in the right direction. But if you don't ask the right people the right questions, then life is going to be <clears throat> like you're stuck in a maze. You are forever moving, but you're not getting anywhere. This is why this week it is important that you listen to the principles, learn of the principles, and then use your faith to have the right connections. Amen. Be, use your faith to be about your father's business. 
ask yourself this question, who is with you? Who is with you? Are you listening? Paul had Timothy and Titus. Timothy and Titus had Paul. Are you listening? Cornelius asked the right question to Peter, the right person, and he had the right answer. Are you listening to me now? The centurion, amen, asked the right question to Jesus. Glory to God. There are right people there that will help you. Amen. The man who was lame from, the mother, from his mother's womb had the right connection and he had the right answer. He received the right answers. Who is with you on your journey? Can you say amen? Glory to God. Well, that's enough for today. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Faith Lift Radio Podcast. For more information about Dr. Glenn and how to offer your financial support, log on to glennarecchion.org.